Hmm. Odd, but it's here. Uh, welcome back, Fam Mouth Fishing Fam, um, and all my fellow hookaholics. Um, this just came on the doorstep today. It is my Elite Mystery Tackle Box for the month of May. Uh, it's held together by a rubber band, which kind of worries me. Um, <laughs> it, the, the security tapes aren't ripped, but it looks like it just slid apart, and evidently they kind of botched it back together with a rubber band. Hopefully nothing's missing, but I just got this like five minutes ago uh, when they rang the doorbell. Uh, so hopefully everything's here. We'll see when we get into it. Uh, if you don't know, um, this is Foul Mouth Fishing. Uh, I do these monthly mystery tackle box, mail order, elite box unboxings. Um, I try to look at the baits that are inside, if at all possible, and there's something special and unique. I'll try to find an alternate uh, version of that bait that might be a little bit less expensive than what MTV promotes theirs on their retail values. Um, so if there's a crankbait, two to five foot, and MTB has it for, you know, some astronomical price, like they say it's uh, $9.99. I'll try to find an, a comparable uh, replica of that or simulator of that and uh, try to get it or give you an option of something for, say, $3, $4. Um, but that's just, that's just me. If I can't really find anything or it's not unique or not out of the way or something everybody knows there's an alternative of, then I won't go into making another detailed uh, video. But if I do, like subscribe to this channel to keep in contact with the alternate baits. So even if you don't subscribe to these Mystery Tackle Box monthly subscription boxes, those alternate bait videos can give you the same options of what I can use to fish out of these um, and save you money without you actually having to subscribe to these. You can go down to your local uh, tackle store. But uh, I, don't need, I don't need my fancy dancy Swiss uh, fillet knife today because I can just un unrubber band this one. So let's Let's get into it. Enough with the, the mystery and get into the box, right? Um, every box, everybody knows, comes with a little ruler, a little set of, uh, you know, uh, weights and measures that you can enter on their, on their social media sites to win prizes. Uh, it looks like, okay, I understand why it was popping. There's a huge box in here, uh, a Weston's bait. Every box comes with a digest pamphlet on tips and tricks of certain techniques for this month or this year. Um, it comes now that sometimes on the back of these dibble digests is your list of baits or they give you these alternate bait cards. Uh, add on information if you want to add things from the Shop Carl's website to your box. Uh, if you like something here you can add it to your next one and the cost of shipping is included in the original shipping cost here. There's also scratch offs occasionally which can give you free shipping or percentages off on, on items. Um, it looks like I have six baits in this card. Hopefully I have six baits or six items in this box. Um, there's a sticker down here, monthly sticker. There you go. It's not Cletus. Cletus was last month. So we're going to have to come up with some names for these guys. Obviously there's Carl Van Dibble, Mr. Red-Headed Bearded Man over there on the, on the tail end of that fish. Uh, I don't know who the MTB uh, guy on the right would be, but who knows. He's got a Mercury outboard. So there's a little little cross branding there, uh, MTB. So let's start with the box. We'll get through this real quick. It's only six items, so this should be a shorter video. Uh, Weston's Freddy the Frog Wake Bait. So, yep, I cast winner for 2018. This is the Weston's Freddy the Frog. It is a hard bait. It's got hard jointed legs and a jointed body. I've seen similar baits, uh, mostly rat baits. This is the first frog. I've never, never fished this. I know of it, but I don't. I've never actually used it. It's a relatively large wake bait. Uh, again, these are hard appendages. These are not uh, soft body. It's a hard body bait. It's got rattles to it. Very small rattles, but they're in there. Uh, jointed body, jointed tail, kicking legs. It's got its own. Uh, connected stinger uh, trailer hook of sorts and trebles on the on the bottom. It's also got a hook tie if you wanted to mount a secondary treble or move the, uh, the front treble towards the back you could certainly do that. I might be uh, might be interested in doing that actually running the treble further back because with these tails or these uh, these leg appendages you're gonna get your strikes out of the back of this um, especially with this plastic lip 
for the waking action. Um, a fish that comes up to slurp it from the front might be turned off by that. But uh, all in all, it's a very attractive, pretty bait. Uh, it's look, it looks more like something you'd have a marionette doll with, but uh, hey, you don't know. I've seen the rat versions of these um, that actually do catch fish. I've never seen Personally, I've never seen any video of any fish actually getting caught on this. Not to say that it's not out there, I just haven't viewed it myself. Um, so, I'll be interested to see what happens. I might just lay, lay this into my um, my pike and musky baits more than my bass. It's a little big for, for bass in my intention. That's a $29.99 is what they're selling this bait for. Again, a bit gimmicky. You're looking at more of something that's aesthetically pleasing to to the fisherman rather than what the hell does a fish care? What, you know, if it's got actual dimples on it and, and and toes and toenails. But they say it's a thirty dollar bait. I there's no um, there's no imitator I can could come up with to to emulate that exactly. So I, I I'm not even gonna try. Uh, obviously, there's other frogs out there for a lot less than thirty dollars. But uh, you know, it is what it is. Next up, uh, $12.99 for the Cortland Master Braid. So I've got a 100 yard moss green 15 pound test braid. Uh, it's pretty smooth. I wonder how many carriers this is. Um, doesn't say, but it is smooth. That's probably, yeah, who knows? Um, I'll have to research that. I don't want to misquote, uh, but it seems to be a pretty good braid. I, I'm not a, a, a tuned to Cortland's Master Braid. Uh, I'm more the uh, Opticon technology. Okay, whatever. Fiber Tech. Blah blah blah. I, I don't. I personally, just real quick, when purchasing a line, I don't look at Optitech and Monoflex and Super Strong and Ironclad and this that and the other thing. I look at how many carriers on braid is we, uh, woven into it. I also look at line diameter. Most of your strength, your tensile strength, your, your recovery, your stretch, all these things and how well it'll, it'll hold up, cast, maintain, uh, uh, disregard chafing or, or, or be resistant to chafing and, and break-offs, it is not in technology because the technology are just buzzwords to get you to buy stuff. It is in the dimensions, the diameter of the material and the material itself. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a small video on that. There's a lot of great, intelligent fishermen out there um, that, that do some, some amazing, uh, informative uh, videos on just that, that, comp uh, that, uh, that commentary, that information. Uh, but if you're going out looking for line, understand you can get a lower pound test line in an identical material that will hold up far better between two different brands and it's based on the diameter of the line, not on the name brand. So, for example, you can get, um, you know, I can get a Master Braid brand, say, well, I'll just use these as, as generalizations. So we use brand A uh, monofilament that has a line diameter of, say, uh, 0.25, or you get, and if, say it's a 30-pound test, and then you go for a line, a brand B, which has a line diameter of 0.179 which is the same pound test. Now, why is that? One material might be an overlay, it might be a, a, a clad a mono, you know, with a fluorocarbon uh, covering, coating, and that adds a little bit more strength, or the 20 pound that's a larger diameter will hold up longer than the 30 pound, which is a slimmer diameter, you know what I mean? So, so brand B might be 30 pound test, and it's thinner, and will break off at 18 pounds, where the 20 pound uh, brand A is is a larger diameter and breaks off at 27 pounds or 25 pounds. So be a cumbent in, in a smart uh, astute shopper in understanding diameter, material, and technique of, of construction, especially in braids. Um, that's the key to buying good line. You don't have to spend top dollar money on names and words and buzz phrases. Uh, like cameras back in the 90s, it was all megapixels. The more megapixels, the better the camera. That's not true. Megapixels was just how many pixelizations were, were viewed on the screen. It was more the software in dissecting those and breaking them up, which is more important than the, the quality of the camera itself. You could do software with a lower megapixel camera that came out far better quality. I digress. Moving on. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, next is uh, K. Okay, uh, Cassix. There we go. Okay, we got Castic or Castaic, I should say. Um, they're Dying Jerk. This is a Chrome IU Dying Jerk uh, jerk bait. So I'll pop this open here. I like this. So you got this uh, avocado green color on the on the head on the t on the top. Uh, I'm not gonna really understand how well this is gonna come up on camera because I got so many different lights, natural light and the and a UV filtered light on the bottom here. Uh, and then it transitions down to a uh, more of a, a green with uh, obviously a um, oh what the hell is it called? I used that last one, but you got you got a silver bottom and you got like your tops baseball card uh, holographic foil in the in the inside, so you can see that flashing those multi tones. Um, but you got a silver white bottom, the holographic coming up to this little green, and then this avocado darker green top. Good eyes, solid tail, it's not like a rubber tail, it's not even a, a V-tail, it's just this this odd angular, uh, you know, acute angled tail uh, fin, almost like a like it'd be a dorsal fin, but it's just a tail. Good little scoop on the front, interested to see how this goes, I might even throw this uh, coming up soon. They're giving this, uh, let's see what they got as far as dive depth if it's listed. So it's a half ounce bait and it's 4.75 inches. Doesn't have a depth at which you jerk it down to. It's pretty shallow, I would assume. Um, but they don't list it on the package, so I'll have to take it out and, and see exactly where it, where it falls. Um, next thing. These two back-to-back, -back, same brand company. I've seen other uh, videos, other boxes, and I'm very happy. Um, to uh, to get this B fishing outdoors did a, his commentary on these two baits. I agree 100% uh, with him. He's not a, he's not really happy with it. I love this. I, I've used it many ways. I've used them a standalone, but I've also uh, I use them in a different way than most people do. So we'll start out with the soft plastic, and then I'll get to the other section of this first. I'll go backwards. Game changer changer uh, game changer lures eel eliminator. So E E L as an eel. Um, because that's what it simulates a little bit with its tail and its um, and its body proportions. They're selling these at five dollars forty nine cents. I actually have these in the green, green pumpkin seed color. This is a green pumpkin seed with a a blue belly. It does stink like a, you know like a squid or, or something of that faction. It's not an overly giant bait in real you know in real time. It's a pretty small bait. I have fairly large hands but nothing to you know gawk about um the key to this bait and what i like about it is um i've said it in the past when i've got uh, other boxes with uh with the just the green pumpkin flake this keeled this keeled belly works out well if you texas rig this um and throw this as if you were throwing a uh you know plastics toad so it's a smaller body proportion form and you can flip this on lily pads flip this in the grass and run it like a toad with that keel it does skirt over the cover over the top water cover um, this big big massive tail kicks quite a lot creates a lot of thump but with this color which they gave you for 549 again the game changers the eliminator same company obviously um, game changers also has their trash master trash master is their Pitch and swimming jig. It is a one half ounce jig, is what they've offered in this package for me. And very intelligently, they've gone with the same green pumpkin and blue color scheme. So these will run together, uh, obviously, as a uh, you know, as a as a, a pairing. So you got your, your terminal tackle and your trailer to go with it. Uh, the great part about this, and and again, he he noted very well is you have a corkscrew keeper head as opposed to the standard pin keepers on most um, you know most general cheap constructed uh, jig heads you'll have you know just either a hook a spring or, excuse me a hook or a, a pin on the on the belly or on the shank of the of the hook itself in this case if I can get it untangled from the multitude of skirting appendages here 
well, this is the best we're going to do right now, you have a, uh, a corkscrew keeper. So by having this free spinning or free uh, pivoting corkscrew, you're able to corkscrew this through the nose of the bait, and that allows you to adjust the bait up and actually pitch this in Texposed so it's it's virtually weedless. It's 99.9% weedless. Um, I'll give you a trick. If you're going to run this on the swim jig, pitch it upside down. Run it with that keeled side up. Run it with the tail facing down. That's going to add more thump in the water as it whips up and over and breaks surface. That keel adds body that you can, when you're tech exposing, it'll give you something that the flat side can then depress and expose that hook. So where you typically would think to spin this on correctly, like a normal human being, I'm not normal, so I would run this transverse and run it with that keeled side up. Even though that blue flash is no longer kind of blending, you got blue on in the skirt and you've got a, a purpley blue glitter in the head of this bait, it's not going to cause that much of a dif difference. And I think that extra bit of, of belly plastic here adds to the longevity of that hook not tearing out and adding more uh, weedless protection. So I'm definitely, definitely going to be throwing this come... Uh, on my next outing on the water. Um, let me put this back real quick. Finally, uh, that again, those were both $5.49. And finally, my sixth and final bait in this package is another one that I'm happy to get. I was glad to see it on others. Uh, a small pack of the Lunker City Osmo. Osmo is kind of a cross between a lizard, a uh, helgamite, uh, if you're aware what those insects look like, and um, I don't know, alien from, al <laughs> from aliens. Uh, it is an absolutely wonderful looking multitude of, of bodies. You've got uh, gill fringes here, uh, so similar to a, a lizard before its transition, uh, or insect, uh, whatever. You've got a multitude of appendages. I'll break this one open just for the sh sh hell of it and shits and giggles. Um, everything on this tears in a multitude of ways. Definitely make sure they're flapping. So you've got your four leg appendages at the top here. You've got your gill flanges here. You've got a pretty stout body, which is very a good solid rigid uh, rubber, which is good for that. You've got your um, winglets, as it were, on the on the bottom. You've got a craw slash lizard uh, fingered kind of tail here going. You've got two more antennae flicking in the back. This is just, this is sensory overload. Um, right here, you're looking at, finally in the northeast, you're looking at a lot of the bedding fish coming in. This is a key bait, I think, run uh, for, for, for bed fishing because it's just, it's too many things all at once uh, looking like something like a, similar to a, a water dog or a lizard or this or that, all attempting to, um, you know, to go after fry or go after the eggs. So I think this is going to definitely uh, promote the reaction strike, the defensive reaction strike. Um, you could probably even drop shot this. Uh, be aware, I would probably drag this through because I'd want my hook to be placed more towards the center of this bait. Uh, fish during the spawn, they're not really interested in eating. They're just interested in shooing away possible predators, scaring away. So they're going to grab it and spit it, grab it and spit it. And you want something basic center line because if they go for the head or they go for the tail, you want a good potential of getting the hook set. Um, and again, as I related real quick, this is the last bait, as I related to a previous video, when you're running these, there's two ways to rig this, a right way and a wrong way. And whenever you see these little flappy appendages, the best thing, take your bait and put your finger out and run it over your finger. You want to make sure when you rig this that these two flanges open up away from the hook to add that exposure for that hook to set. If you run it this way and they, they start curling in on each other and covering that hook, that's the, up, that's the wrong side. That's the wrong side up. So what you want to do is you want to flip it over. So... Anytime you see these kinds of baits, um, this one's a little bit different because it has more, more body in the tail end. But if it does do that one way or the other, just real quick, run that test. See which way they best open up, and that's the way you want to rig it with that hook exposed. So that's a little, little trick and technique. Um, again, it was a quick box. It only had six things in it, uh, which is kind of semi-depressing, be it, it's, it, it is, after all, 
the Elite box, not the Pro box, or not the Standard box. Um, and I've talked to Mystery Tackle about, you know, I think Standard should have uh, 4 to 6, uh, Pro should have 6 to 8, and Elite should have 10. Uh, but that's just my personal thing. Nothing to do with their, their company, uh, you know, decisions. Uh, I hope this was uh, at least entertaining. I'm happy that it looks like every bait that was in my box showed up, although it was obviously opened up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did and want to join the Hookaholics um, and the Foul Mouth Fishing family, uh, smash the like button, share this video. I'm at about 300. I'm going to say this. I'm at 360 subscribers for like the eighth time. Uh, every so often, for some stupid reason, the YouTube algorithm keeps... As soon as I get subscribers, it'll deduct a few, and then subscribers that I've witnessed join with my, you know, with my email postings never show up in my subscriber count. So it's incumbent to really push, share this video, get that subscriber count up. At 500, I can give away a big, big prize. Uh, at 1,000, I got a big, big prize. Um, in July, this coming for my birthday, I'm going to give away a prize to a, to a viewer. So you got to stay tuned. So like share and subscribe to this channel, get your friends to subscribe to the channel and share it with their friends, anybody who's interested in fishing as a hobby or as a fundamental way to relax. Um, I hope you enjoy and I hope to dispense as much information and helpful hints and tips in the future. So if you uh, enjoyed this, I hope you did. As always, uh, tight lines and uh, God bless. Thanks for, uh, for spending some time with me. Bye-bye.